promised in the previous video that I'm gonna give you tips on how to have a smooth process when authenticating your documents and applying for your visa. I don't want to add everything I'm gonna say now to the previous video because I don't want it to be too long um, because I had my fair share of experience when I was authenticating my documents and it was hectic, hectic, okay? So firstly, I need to remind you that I need to remind you that you need to take your ID everywhere you go because they need it everywhere you go. So you need to take your ID or your passport everywhere you go. And um, another thing is I got my police clearance certificate within one week. When you go apply for the police clearance certificate, they tell you that it takes about two to six weeks, but mine took one week, okay? So I'm gonna tell you exactly how I got that. Um, I applied at the Hospontaine police station in Pretoria. That's it's very close to Mainland. So I applied there. I was also hoping for the six weeks because when I got there, they told me that you're gonna wait about two to six weeks. That's the standard waiting time, right? And they told me that there's backlog at the criminal record center. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. While I was doing my fingerprints, that guy asked me, why are you going to China? I was just like chatting with him about what I'm going to do and how many interviews I've had and so forth. And then he was like, oh, you already have a job. And I was like, yeah. He was like, so where's your um, appointment letter? He was like, so if we attach your appointment letter to your application, it will be um, it will be treated as urgent because they will see that this person is ready to leave the country and process your stuff faster than everyone else's, you know? I was like, what? Went to the car, got him my appointment letter, attached it, and guys, within a week, I got that SMS. And after I received that SMS, maybe an hour later, he called me to let me know that he has it at the Hartsfontein police station. He has my PCC at the Hartsfontein police station. I was like, what? In one week, guys. So my advice is that if you want to get yours within one week um you can always try to get a job first and then apply for the police clearance certificate but if you have all the time then you can always do it and wait for those six weeks or eight weeks or whatever however long it takes there are people who have waited for like eight weeks plus so if you want to be part of that gang you can always do it before you apply but my advice is that apply first and then try and get it within a week right but i think maybe it's not guaranteed yeah i don't know if it's guaranteed but i'm just telling you my experience maybe it will work for you maybe it won't work for you but i'm definitely sure that if you go to the same police station in hospital it will definitely work for you i trust that guy so the second thing that you need to know is the operating times of these places that you need to go to don't go close at half past 12 right but listen, you have to be there at least at 11 o'clock, at least to be safe. Because when you get to Jericho, right, there's this parking area outside. That's where you park your car and then you have to go register to get a visitor's pass, right? So at the registration office, it's like a mini office at the gate. At that mini office, guys, the queue can be long. The queue can be so, so long, guys. And especially if you need to, especially if you're going to collect your documents. After collecting your documents, usually people just go straight to um, the embassy because it's like five minutes drive away. So if you're also going to do the same thing, you need to get there early so that you, you're able to make it to the Chinese embassy on time as well. So, um, guys, let me tell you the process, right? I'm going to share with you the process so that you understand why I'm emphasizing on time. So when you get there, there's a parking. At the parking area, that's where you park your car first and then you register for visitor's pass. And that's where you're going to find a long as queue. After registration, they give you a pass, a visitor's pass. You go back to your car and then you drive in. Before you drive in, they search your car, right? Then you drive in. Once you drive in, 
you go to the visitor's parking inside. From that visitor's parking to the offices where you're actually going to authenticate your documents. Yo, hey, it's a walk. It's a long, long walk. And also, it's so steep. Guys, you need to be ready. Like you should, you need, you need to wear your active clothes and trainers when you go there. Because it's an exercise on its own. Yo, hey. So, guys, please, please, please be prepared when you go there. So that's why I'm emphasizing that you need to go on time because all of that just takes so much time that if you get there at 12 o'clock, you might not even make it. You might not even make it. Because the queue outside might take you 30 minutes long and then to drive inside might take you like 10 minutes, then to walk another 10 to 15 minutes. So to be on the safe side, get there before 11. Please don't say I never warned you. Don't say I never warned you, please. So when you guys, when you guys go to the high court, the high court also closes around half past 11. So when you get to the high court, what you do, the high court in Pretoria, that is, when you get to the high court, you just, uh, you take the, you take the elevator to the first floor. And then when you get to the fl first floor, there's like an exit on your right. So once you get to that exit door, you immediately take a right. And then you're going to see some, um, what's this, some waiting area. And then that's where you actually authenticate your documents. You, uh, because I don't want you to get lost. In this process, time is critical, guys. Because if you, if you miss one station, it can prolong your process. If you were planning on being in Pretoria for one week, you might have to stay there until the following week to get your documents. Just because you missed one station by 10 minutes or 5 minutes. The Chinese embassy closes at half past 11, right? But guys, let me tell you this. You need to be there on time. I'm going to emphasize this. You need to get there at least an hour before they close. Because hours, you know, no handbags allowed. I don't know why. But no handbags allowed. So once you go in, um, the, there's a guy who facilitates all of that process, like the number of people who, who go inside, right? So once you get inside, it doesn't matter what time you got to the embassy. But I'm telling you, at half past 11, they will tell you to go back home because they can't help you. The person who's standing at the counter at half past 11 is the last person who's going to be helped at the Chinese embassy. If you are still in the queue inside the building, unfortunately, they're going to send you home. You, do you understand how critical time is now? You, you don't want to be that guy who's been kicked out at half past 11, right? The visa application center in Santon. Let me tell you all about it. Before I went there, I, I checked on Google and on Facebook. People were saying, no, they closed at four. Fine. I was driving from Polokwani on that day. I drove very, very early in the morning. Um, I was delayed at some point, but whatever. I was just like, okay, four o'clock. Ah, man, I still have time. I got there around two o'clock past two. And I struggled to find parking. Also, parking is a problem because it's inside the Santon the Sanson City Mall, right? So, I struggle. First of all, I struggle to find parking close to the Sanson City Towers. But if you want to park further away, then it's fine, right? But I struggle to find parking close by. So, I was just driving around the same place until someone left and then fine, I occupied that parking. That took me about 10 to 15 minutes, right, to get a parking spot. After getting a parking spot, you go to the towers, when you get there, um, fine, you apply. And when I got to the visa application center, I remember I didn't have my, I didn't have the Chinese version of my invitation letter. So they were like, no, you need a Chinese version. Fine. I asked my school to send me a Chinese version. They sent it within, I think, 10 minutes. So obviously I needed to print it. And they were like, sorry, we, we can't help you. You need to go to Postnet. And Postnet is like five minutes five to yeah let's just say five minutes walking distance from um the offices 
and that time it's about five minutes to three o'clock and mind you i thought they close at four before i left the offices to go to postnet they were closing the doors and i was like how why are you guys closing it's only five to three they were like ah, eh, i will see by the time you get back here we'll be closed we close at three and i'm like no guys you guys close at four <sighs> guys i didn't only rely on google this time around i even called them and that number i used has like an automatic recording that says okay no operating hours are from this time to this time if you come in to apply you must come from this time to this time and if you come in to collect you must come from this time to this time but all of that was a lie don't be fooled the visa application center closes at three o'clock and make it there on time because they don't negotiate remember i got there and applied i did everything the only last thing that i had to do was to just go to postnet get a copy come back and then everything was going to be fine but they were like hey, is this? those people don't negotiate so you better be there on time babes time another document that you're going to need right this is for people who have never worked before so if you've never worked before in your life and there's no way you can get a recommendation letter uh to apply and your 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 company or your school needs a recommendation letter so my advice is that you go to the tefl academy's website i keep on telling you guys about the tefl academy's website so i'm gonna leave a link in the description box below uh, on their website you will be able to find like um internships so internships don't need you to have work experience and they also don't need a recommendation data so you can go there apply for the internships and then gain a little bit of experience and that's how you actually um, get a recommendation letter to come work in China and also the nice thing about the internships on on the Seville Academy's website that I've seen um, The nice thing about them is that like you can go anywhere If I took on this journey straight after varsity I would also have taken one of those internships and I probably would have taken it in a different country so that I at least like maybe Thailand or um, Vietnam and then get experience in those countries and then come work in China because China pays more than most of the countries, right? But like I would have done my internship in one of those countries just for the experience because most of these internships don't pay that much. And usually if it's like for six months, then it's like, it's not a train smash. Six months straight from varsity, it's not that bad. It's, it's not that for the travel experience that you're going to be gaining, it's not bad at all. Another thing is the notary, guys. In order to notarize your TEFL, you have to pay, right? Like I've said in my previous video, it costs from as little as 150 rands to 1,000. So it just depends on who you go to and how much you have. If you're big on bargains like I am, I'm going to refer you to the guy I went to, guys. I paid 150 rands to get my TEFL notarized. I know people who've paid over 800 rands to get the TEFL certificate notarized. Guys, that thing is not worth 850 rands. Like, it's not worth more than 800, guys. So if you want to get it for 150 rands, I will leave the guy's um, details in the description box below. His offices are in Brooklyn. Um, I was lucky on that day, the day I was supposed to actually go to his offices, uh, he was already at the high court. So we met at the high court and then I got all my stuff done at the high court. Then like I was done. So basically those are all the tips that I want to give to you guys. Um, I hope I didn't miss out on any crucial information that I had planned on sharing with you guys. Um, but till next time, thanks for watching.